So I'm not really, I'm not pushing against anyone. In particular, I'm just kind of thinking about that alchemical process of meeting. Okay, so let's look at that example of fathers who were just like, look, I'm putting my foot down here. We're not going to have a free birth because that's just too far. I think most of the time, for most, from when I've heard that being an example, I think for me immediately what comes up is there hasn't been enough time and space weaved into the pregnancy to allow for those conversations. There's just like, I think it's a little bit of a Western dynamic where we just look at the birth coming and you're like, cool, I'm going to prepare by working heaps hard, by making sure that I can have time off afterwards. And yes, there's going to, you know, guys and partners going to all of the, you know, doing their best to go to all the meetings with a midwife or whatever. There's all that part, but it's, and I'm going to get there, guys. I'm just kind of like picking apart all my <laughs> little pieces. There's two kind of dynamics that play out. And let's just look at from going on from the one, from the guy focus where the guy's gone, right, I have a concern. So right now I'm just going to put my foot down. And I talked about it in the first podcast. The first thing you want to ensure is that you never end up into like absolute foot down territory. Now that's at the time where I would think where what in birth courses and a lot of birthing communities you hear, right, if you are in absolute, you've tried everything to get some collaboration and conversation and addressing of what the concerns are. You just have a bullheaded partner that's just like, no, I'm not going to collaborate. This is an absolute no conversation that this is what's happening. At that point, I think it's an amazing to there have a community and a community of understanding women and perhaps an even like an institution that really advocates for, say, lowest possible intervention birth or highest possible union between baby and mum kind of birth that ultimately kind of somewhat bypasses. And so that's when I hear in birthing courses, them talk about like, if you come up against that, that's at the point where you say, well, you don't have a right to be in the birth. And I just didn't like how quickly it jumped to yeah. that because that's so seldom I think you would ever come up against a guy, like 95% of the guy. What I think is lacking is just that consultation period. I think what we're not aware of is just the process that leads towards the process of harmonizing as a family. The guy's concerned or the woman's concerned or their intentions or whatever it is, they may seem maligned or it may seem that in this day and age, especially around like, you know, this area, the guy just needs to kind of like, all right, cool, I'm just going to sit on the sideline and he doesn't actually have the balls to bring well, up. That happens the other way though. Women just who are raised as people pleasers just give absolutely to their partner's wishes and then feel not sovereign in their birthing space, which results in... I think sometimes a cascade of intervention, which can be deeply traumatic. So well, it's... not only that, the system is so male-oriented that you go in to any kind of interaction, even with like midwives, and they're going to default to that masculine. that masculine concern. Then what happens is the pendulum swings and it goes towards a feminine, chaotic, wild birth intention. And what we're missing is that incredible intersection where a seemingly non-aligned male concern or very like some precision in understanding what things could go wrong. And a lot of guys I would probably say like are scared to even acknowledge that they're worried about things that could go wrong because then maybe that interrupts the magical manifestation of what's going to go. It's going to don't even bring that energy into my works, into my birth space, which I think is a reasonable thing for a woman to say if it's been jammed down the throat at a very inappropriate time like last minute whereas most likely six months before was a really good time to bring up like I'm well, freaking even before you got pregnant like I think I don't know who says this someone says this not me but I've read it and I think it's very true that the work needs to be done before you conceive with the partner and yourself not to say the work ends but the work needs to be begun preconception that you're communicating well you've learned each other's communication styles and triggers to some degree I remember with Aya we went to therapy together because we'd only been together really two years and a year of that was long distance and we had different communication styles and it wasn't about birth so much but like we needed to have turned out to be a total failure but probably brought us closer together because the guy because the intention was (laughs) yeah the guy Mm. was a kook Yeah, we had to do that during the pregnancy and that was not the most optimal time, I think. And I I think if I could give anyone advice, like the level of 
trust the five years between Leo and I have built in our relationship. Like that was so present for me in birth that I just, you weren't even operating in my conscious awareness. I feel like we're so connected and I know you and how you hold yourself in space that I could just completely surrender to myself in that. And that's come through our deepening of our relationship. And definitely part of that was Aya's birth and us learning that we could both trust each other in that space and all those kinds of things. But yeah, I think to just assume that, you know, you're going to, like, I actually think if you're at the point of your relationship where you can't communicate about those things, it's actually quite worrying, I guess, that you're going to, like, yeah, I think there'd be a really optimal opportunity to really work on communication styles and clarifying things at that point because mm-hmm. yeah I think it gets pretty tricky if you're especially- if there's no budge and there's no landscape between opposing opinions and realizing hey this is opposing energies is what actually contributes to well, that's what caused the baby to come into being mm-hmm. and it's necessary to have that yin and yang tension I suppose but you know I just keep thinking about say you're in birth and it does head toward a transition when a lot of women freak out because it's intense and they change try to change their birth plan dramatically in that moment I think if the man or support person whoever that is doesn't feel very clear very solid they could easily panic and go into a stress response at that point so I just think about the opportunity lost in terms of like okay you can see this divide between say a guy who's like no this is my child as well and I just have absolutely I don't have the space or time to go and consider any kind of free birth or any kind of birth away from that isn't like a whatever it could be to the extent of planned c-section if you can actually bring those opposing points and have hours and hours and hours of conversation about it before pregnancy sure but you know yeah uh, like, reality, like, reality <laughs> probably is, having it during pregnancy well the reality is that if you can yeah you can get like four to six to eight hours you know more have a weekly rhythm where it's something we do we've got a family rhythm you know people have date nights especially if it's your first baby get those date nights going on because once you take away the initial charge around like, no, it's not happening. This is actually dangerous and the statistics of this and that. Cool. Listen to it. What's normally behind it, and this is always, you know, it's just like, you know, yes, there might be someone who's like trying to be right or gather evidence for why they're, what they want to do is right. Maybe there's women who are trying to like avoid being dominated or being wrong. So they'll just maybe yield or women who are like, absolutely not. It's free birth out there in the wilderness and that's it. There's no fusion. There's actually no magic been created and if you can take away that pressure and realize there's actually at the core of it is something beautiful and i think for it really bugged me a couple of i've just heard a couple of throwaway like you know no if he can't get on board with you he's out Mm -hmm. and i just thought fuck what a waste it's such a especially when most of the time a guy given a little bit of space will just want to play out scenarios and he'll just want to exercise the way that he's expressing love for the woman and for his child and going like i just really want to be involved and I want to be conscientious of what could happen and I want to be the one sitting there protecting this space and protecting you guys and he just hasn't you know we don't have the experience of how to like communicate those things a lot of the time but you can follow the thread and just to go and cut it off and be like no you're out it's such a panic move and it doesn't have consideration for just that unionizing element that being involved not just patting the guy on the head or patting the woman on the head and being like oh you precious thing you want to be involved let me just answer all your faqs and then can you just go and sit on the side and let the professionals actually handle it again like no it's not ornamentally or whoever the birth partner is they're not ornamental that needs to be fostered that them going in as close as possible to engaging and being present to that birth energy needs to be fostered as much as possible for both or all involved however like There's so many different ways that it can work and dynamics. It's not just a man and a woman. I know that for sure. I've talked about that invisible thing that is birth magic. And that's the difference between it being a fully unified, you know, not fully, never going to be fully. There's always going to be a ratio of birth magic to birth trauma. We know they have to work in unison, but it's like which way does the scales tilt? And for my intention is seeing what I think is the most important outcome from birth is the level of family that's created from it. (laughs) 